in this video a uh, more explanation perhaps it's interesting about how I made that primitive DC amperimeter. There's a pin here with uh, windings around it. When you want to make it uh, keep in mind that the isolation of the copper wire inside must be heat resistant because 8 ampere flows through it and when 8 ampere flows through this winding it gets hot. So in the definite circuit that I've published earlier I've used other wiring anyway. And I want to optimize the circuit and that's very strange how this um, small uh, magnet that was taken out of this thing. You can buy them everywhere. It's a flat magnet. How it acts. And that's what I want to show. I cannot show the amperometer. So I will read the ampere uh, uh, rating. And you can see what happens and how you can optimize the circuit. Uh, the the uh, specific thing is here that this um, flat magnet is attracted here by the metal inside of that steel pin. And now I change the, the current. You can see what happens. There's a small movement. But when I move, now it's attracted, so I move it away now. At the same time, 8 ampere is flowing. And here it's out of the magnetic field. So when you mount it, for instance, here or here, now it is. Uh, 1 ampere, 2 ampere, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And now I hear the hum out of my power supply because it's a maximum. Uh, current that it can give and there's a lot of ripple, I can feel it in my finger. Now I suddenly go back to zero. And I've done a lot of experiments again today to optimize the circuit. I also tried to make a coil moving in the field, in a magnetic field. That was very difficult. So this is a simple solution and this is when you want to optimize it the best distance. So you can also see that every metal that, uh, and then I mean a magnetic material, that gets into the field of that magnet, makes that the magnet moves. So my pointer is connected here in the video that I've earlier showed. So let's try again. 8 ampere. And when you get close and then go back to zero, you get a very slight movement because it's in the field. And I turn it back now. So, of course, this steel pin also gets uh, more or less permanently magnetized uh, steel. In this case is a kind of weak iron. Uh, that's of course not correct, but anyway, steel is not weak iron, but anyway, uh, the magnetic field that is built up in the steel pin is not able to um, make it permanent magnetic. So this is this could be now it's zero still attraction. So that means that we have to move somewhat 
out of that field. So you have to find a kind of compromise where this keeps working properly. Now it, you can see this, uh, the field is very far here now. So it works anyway, no problem at all. And it works properly. But there must be an optimum place where that uh, um, steel kind of spring made of a beer can um, has its best position to um, make the pointer move. Tiny movement, bigger movement here. One ampere, two ampere, three, eight. And here it's out of reach of the magnetic field of that steel pin. So I want to exp experiment further. This is uh, not the ideal situation. Now they stick together. So I take it out, take it apart. And this is perhaps the best position. So anyway, it's it's good to do experiments, and of course, the wiring can be um, thicker. Uh, the steel uh, pin can be uh, um, changed to two steel pins, or a bigger, or a, a bolt. Sorry, yes, a bolt, not a nut, but a bolt, and. Well, this is perhaps a good position. And of course, all is an indication. So we go back now to 1 ampere, 2 ampere. I cannot see how it works because I have to look on the amperometer. 3 ampere, 4 ampere, 5 ampere, 6 ampere, 7 amps, 7.8 ampere. So, more work to do.